there is no hiding it. The Case Labs SMA8A revision has arrived in office, and I wanted to give an overview of a very niche product that has developed quite the zealous fan base over the past few years. Now, this isn't going to be a full and comprehensive review as clearly I haven't built in here yet, but that entire process will be documented for you guys really soon. Now, the reason that I have this sitting here next to me is that I'll be doing a full custom water cooling project in it over the next month or so. And while it's true that some of you have probably heard me mention it since January or so, at long last, we can actually get it off the ground as now everything is here. The fact that this case is here for a water cooling project should be no surprise. And in fact, I'm pretty confident that you're not buying one of these unless you're going to be putting together a massive overkill system. After all, as configured, this is a $900 case, more than the entire budget for most people's complete builds. However, unfortunately, there was a little mix up during packing and shipping, and one of the coolest features introduced to the SMA8 for the A revision is missing in our sample. Case Labs offers what they call a luminous mid plate option with this case, which provides a significant ambient upglow towards your components and looks pretty amazing. Maybe you'll get a chance to take a look at it some other time. Regardless though, I do wanna say a big thank you to Case Labs for sending this over for this review and for use in this upcoming project. You can check them out at the link down below. As you'd expect from a super premium enclosure, a USB 3.1 Type-C front panel connection is an option. Although the base config actually has no front panel IO at all, just the power button. The entire construction is made of a matte black finish, super high quality aluminum, instead of the more traditional case material steel. This makes each panel lighter, better at dissipating heat, and easier to drill through or mod if that's your thing. You will notice that there are no dust filters on this case, however, and that is actually one of the few options that you can't change when placing your order. You'll either need to grab a third-party accessory from a company like Dempsiflex, or just be really vigilant about cleaning. This huge tempered glass window is another new feature, and it again is a configurable $50 add-on, but I think if you're spending this much on a case and subsequent system build in 2018, this is basically a must have. The glass is mounted to a hinged side panel, mirrored on the right side as well. The door swings out and lifts off for easy interior access. Once you're inside the case, you can basically get lost in all the space. This is not something you invest in if you're just gonna throw a Hyper 212 Evo onto your Ryzen 5 1600. In fact, this is the largest motherboard I own, the ASUS RG Zenith Extreme. It's a true EATX motherboard and it looks teeny tiny here. The huge amount of available room is there to afford for multiple reservoir mounting points and dual or even triple loop configurations. You also have enlarged rubber rimmed pass-throughs for cabling or tubing. And even though usually I'd say, why aren't there grommets here? I actually think this is an even more premium look and feel and goes along with the design choices throughout. Those multiple loops have plenty of radiator mounting possibilities, as this case is equipped with a 4x120 mount at the top, a 3x120 mount at the front, and a 4x140 mount at the bottom that can be converted to hold 120 millimeter size fans and rads instead. Each radiator bracket is individually removable from the exterior of the chassis, meaning you can install your components first and then drop in your water cooling gear afterwards. This is incredibly convenient for servicing, cleaning, or swapping out radiators or fans. Easy access continues to the motherboard tray, which can be slid out easily after undoing these four spring-loaded captive screws around back. Again, being able to remove a part and service it outside of the case just makes for a more convenient situation, especially when the alternative is to lug around this enormous case that you've already put together. Around behind the tray, we see our storage options, two hard drive bays that hold two drives each, along with a single four slot SSD caddy. The A revision of the SMAA introduces these aluminum cable guides to help with cable management. Although with a case this large, it almost seems unnecessary. It's not like you're gonna run out of room here, and there are some cable tie down points to help you out along the way already. 
Still though, this is a really nice touch. And if you're really a stickler for neatness, you can do some really cool things like this with your cables. You know, hopefully. Besides the very different, very customizable ordering procedure, something else that sets Case Labs cases apart from your normal box from Cooler Master is that they come completely disassembled. The reason that they can offer so many different configurations is because they don't need to hold stock of them all at once. They just need to have the individual parts in the warehouse. When your order is placed, the parts are picked and put into a box along with all the necessary hardware, including extras, which is nice, and even a driver tool, and shipped to you as is. Assembly of this SMA8 took about two hours from start to finish, and I definitely recommend having an electric screwdriver or cordless drill on hand to assist you with all the fasteners you'll need to use. The directions are definitely basic, and I found myself wishing for a little more detail, but the order of operations is correct, and I was able to muddle through the rest without much of an issue. If you're looking to build yourself the ultimate water cooling system, it doesn't get much better than a Case Labs case. The SMA8 now comes in two-tone if you'd rather have not just all black, further increasing their appeal and moving the design forward to keep up with current trends. The system that I'll be building in here will be killer, and I can't wait to get started on it. Look for the first video sometime in the next week or two. So what do you guys think of the Case Labs SMA8A revision? And what would you build in here if you had one? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. I hope you guys like this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.